right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, Bible study. If you're watching this or hop on this now, it's a little early than normal. But like I said, like I said last time, if you catch it uh, later, then it, you know, hey, it really doesn't matter. But I'm posting it now because we got some stuff we're going to. I haven't been able to do a whole lot with the kids lately, and of course Sandy's working, so we're going to take Travis out after a while. Uh, so I didn't, wasn't sure what time I get back, but I wanted to do a little Bible study tonight, carrying on with the book of Romans. And I figure what better time to do it. It's hot outside. You can't go outside and do a whole lot right now. So let's just jump into the book of Romans and do a little bit of Bible study. Uh, let me apologize for, um, the audio from this morning sermon. I haven't heard it, but, uh, I'm, I would imagine it was probably hard to hear, uh, a lot of wind was blowing, so um, uh, it, uh, you might not have been able to hear the uh, audio that well. Uh, but uh, appreciate you tuning in this afternoon. If you got your Bibles, Romans chapter 2 is where we're going to be at uh, for a few minutes today. And we're going to finish out the chapter uh, of Romans chapter 2 today. And, uh, and then we'll move on to... Um, to another to chapter three in our next time together uh so romans chapter two here starting with the 17th verse paul is really hard on the jews here because they're promoting the law and of course paul uh wow that was interesting it was <laughs> i had seven people jump up there and i've only got lenny hanging in with me everybody else left lenny you are the true the proud the brave Thank you for hanging in with me, because everybody else is just gone. Uh, well, story of my life, right? Anyways, uh, Romans chapter 2. Paul is, is getting on the, the Jews here because uh, of their, um, their thoughts about the law. They think because they're Jewish uh, that they, uh, they are automatically right with God, because they were born of Jewish ancestors. And so Paul, Paul really calls them out here in uh, the book of Romans. Of course, Paul was a Roman, and, and Paul uh, was a Jew, and Paul brags about being a Jew. And he says he was the Jew of all Jews. And um, Pharisee, it was a Pharisee and all this stuff, you know. And, and so he was really, he was on them because he's trying to teach them grace, that no matter how good we are, we can, none of us can live up to the law. And so I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. So if you have Romans chapter 2 and you have uh, verse 17. Uh, now I apologize again. I'm, um, I've got cataracts on my eyes uh, that are going to be removed at the end of the year. So I'm doing the best I can. Okay. Uh, so Romans chapter 2 verse 17. Now you, if you call yourself a Jew, if you rely on the law and boast in God, if you know his will and approve of what uh, is superior because you are instructed by the law, if you are convinced that you are a guide for the blind and a light for those who are in the dark, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of little children because you have in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth, then you, you then who teach others, do you teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do you steal? You who say people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? As, as it is written, God's name is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Now what Paul is doing here is pointing out to the Jews and says, look, you folks claim to be Jews because of your birthright. He said, you're teaching, you're an instructor, but are you teaching yourself? And he's pointing out that their lifestyle doesn't match what they're professing, what they're claiming. And so he says, uh, you who teach others, do you not teach yourself? So he's saying, look, you all are telling everybody else what they're doing wrong, but obviously you're not teaching yourself what's wrong because you're doing the same things. And then he points out to, to them, you who preach against stealing, 
do you steal? Now the answer to that has to be yes, because he's questioning them. Look, you all tell people not to steal, but you're, still, you're stealing from people. Uh, you who preach, uh, you who, verse 22, you who say that people should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, uh, do you dishonor God by breaking the law? Now, I want to read this to you in the, uh, the Living Bible and listen to, to what it has to say uh, in the Living Bible. And I'm going to start um, verse 17. You Jews think all is well between yourself and God because he gave this, his law to you. You brag that you are special friends. Yes, you know what, uh, he, what he wants. What, you know what God wants. You know right from wrong and favor the right because you have been taught his laws from the earliest youth. You who are, uh, you are so sure of the way to God that you point, point it out to the blind man. Uh, you think yourselves a beacon of light, directing men who are lost in the darkness to God. You think that you can guide the simple and teach even children uh, his affairs, for you really know his law, which is full of knowledge and truth. Now listen to what he says here. Yes, you teach others. Now listen to what Paul says. Then why don't you teach yourselves? You tell others not to steal. Do you steal? We've already said the answer to that. You say it is wrong to commit adultery. Do you do it? You say do not pray to idols and then, uh, and then make money your God instead. Now, you remember what they were doing in the temple and all that, why Jesus overturned the money changer tables uh, was because they were taking sacrifices that people were bringing in and were declaring them not good enough and then forcing people to buy stuff at the temple, sacrifices at the temple that were way overcharging. Take it, for instance, like this, like going, going to King's Island. You can buy a Coke in a gas station for $1.89 or something like that, but you go to King's Island, a Coke is going to cost you uh, in a bottle $4.50, $5 a bottle. It, it's overcharging without calls. Okay? Uh, verse 23. You are so proud of knowing God's law, but you dishonor Him by breaking them. No wonder the scriptures say that, you, uh, that the world speaks evil of God because of you. Now he's talking about the Jews, that they're professing, and I think this is the same for Christians too, uh, except Paul's dealing with the church at uh, Rome, uh, and a lot of them, a lot of the folks in and around here, well, the, the majority of the church were Jewish Christians, people who were out of a Jewish background uh, who had converted to Christ, and he was telling those who were still trying to live by the law, you know, you don't preach it if you're not going to live it. Now, I think that's hard. That's a hard road to, um, to haul for all of us who are trying to be Christians, that we're trying, to, we're trying to tell others how to live, and maybe we're not doing it ourselves. And so for those of y'all just jumping in here, we're in Romans chapter 2, and we're, we're in verse 17, working our way down. Uh, so Paul's here like, look, if you're going to preach it, live it, okay? And it's not right. And again, it's not right for us to judge other people who are, are are doing these things that he's he's put in here, committing adultery or stealing or whatever. When we're doing the same things ourselves, okay. And so he's getting on the Jews and saying, "Look, you're teaching to live by the law, but you're not doing it. You're not living by the law." And I would say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that that's the biggest complaint out of non-saved people when they point when you talk to them about Christianity, they'll point out that. Why should we do it when, when Christians are not doing it themselves? And I think it's a very valid um, I think it's a very valid argument. Why would they want to do what we're doing if uh, you know or go to church if we don't act no different than the rest of them? Why would they want to uh, worship God uh, if uh, all we're concerned with is making money? Why would they want to trust God? when we're fearful of everything. And I talked about that this morning, about not being fearful. Uh, you know, why do, why do they want to follow Jesus when they don't see Jesus in us? And so Paul's bringing that to the Jew in that regard, is you're pointing people 
to the law, but you're not living out the law yourself. And so he goes down in verse 25, if you look at chapter 2, verse 25, circumcision has value if you observe the law. But if you break the law, you have become as though you had not been circumcised. So what's the deal about the law? How do you get to heaven to serve the law? Then uh, observing the law. You have to follow all of it and not break one law. And you know why he sent Jesus? It's because he knew that none of us could fulfill the whole law. It's not possible. Somewhere along the line, we're going to mess up somewhere along the way. And so God sent Jesus as the final fulfillment of the law so that we, when we place our faith and trust in him, we are no longer under the bondage of the law. Which again, is if we, make, we miss one rule of the law, one of them, then we've broken them all. And so the only way to get to heaven by following the law is to never break any law. And we know that only one man was perfect, and that was Jesus. And so he says, if you go all the way around to be having circum circumcision or um, you know, having your children circumcised, now this is not Western circumcision. This is circumcision in uh, Middle Eastern culture for religious purposes. Okay, We do it in Western culture for health and cleanliness reasons. They've done it in Middle Eastern culture uh, at, for religious purposes. He said, if you, circumcision has no value if you break the law. You've become though as though you have not been circumcised. So you have went through pain for no reason. So then, if those who are not circumcised keep the law's requirement, will they not be regarded as though they were circumcised? So he's talking to the Gentiles. So he's saying, if the Gentiles keeps the law, shouldn't they be regarded as those who have been circumcised? Because they've kept the law, okay? Verse, uh, let me read this, read this portion out of the uh, Living Bible, and that was verse 25. Being a Jew is worth something if you obey God's laws. But if you don't, then you're no better off than the heathen. And if, and if the heathen, the Gentile, the sinner, the, the, you and I who are, are not Jewish, uh, and if the heathen obey God's law, won't God give them all the rights and honors he planned to give to the Jews? And that's what he's saying. He said, look, if you're going to circumcise, fine. Keep all the law. But don't think that the Gentiles, if they kept all the law, wouldn't be considered uh, righteous because they're doing what you're not doing, okay? All right, let's move on here for just a minute. Um, verse 27. The one who is not circumcised physically and yet obeys the law will condemn you who even though have writ the written code of circumcision are a lawbreaker. A person is not a Jew who is the only one, who is on, one only outward nor is the circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, inwardly. And circumcision is circumcision of the heart by the spirit, not by the written code. Such a person's praise is not from other people, but from God. Now see how Paul changes this now. He's talking to the Jews and saying, listen, the only proper circumcision post the cross is a circumcision of the heart. A person who's a Jew, uh, verse 28, a person who's not a Jew, a person who is not a Jew is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outwardly and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart. So now Paul throws out here, um, he's, he's building a case and he's throwing it out here. He's, he's pointing out their sins in chapter 1 and, and most of chapter 2. And now he's throwing out here that there's a greater circumcision than the circumcision of flesh. And it's the circumcision that was brought when Calvary uh, came along when Jesus died on the cross and not 40 days afterwards um, 
he, uh, he gave us the Spirit at Pentecost 50 days afterwards. And we have the Holy Spirit as believers living on the inside of us. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us. Now the circumcision is not a circumcision of flesh. God is circumcising our heart. And he's making our heart uh, to be what he wanted, wants it to be. Now let me read this to you from the uh, NIV. Or from the, sorry, from the uh, um, Living Bible. Verse 28. For you are not real Jews just because you were born of Jewish parents because you've gone through the Jewish initiation ceremony of circumcision. Now listen to this closely. No, a real Jew is anyone who is right with God. For God is not looking for those who cut their bodies in actual body circumcision. But he is looking for those who changed heart, with changed hearts and minds. Whoever has that kind of change in his life will get his praise from God, even if not from people. Okay, so the Jews wanted to walk around bragging that you know, hey, I'm, I've been circumcised and uh, you know I'm Jewish and I'm we're better than the Gentiles. You have to understand everything in the context of the day. Gentiles and the Jews hated each other, so they uh, they always wanted seeing the Christian as a second class citizen. Uh, because of this new branch of religion that is that is new now, uh, you know, Ju Judaism had prevailed in that area for thousands of years. Now all of a sudden, you've got Christianity competing, and more people are going. More of the Jews are starting to trickle over to Christianity and being saved. And so, the Jews were still trying to preach you could be a Christian, but you had to follow the law. And Paul's back on them and saying, "Listen." You can circumcise yourself, you can, uh, you can preach the law, but if you break one law, you've broken them all. And he's saying, now that Jesus has come, God is not looking for a circumcision of the flesh, he's looking for a circumcised heart. What's that mean? It means a heart that has been, um, has been surrendered to him, a heart that's got all the hardness cut out of it, a heart that is pliable and and uh, flexible to the things of God, a, a heart that has been changed uh, by the uh, relationship with Jesus Christ, a heart that's not hardened to, to sin and all the things, but once you get born again, the Spirit comes and lives within, and your eyes are open to, uh, to sin. Now, you still may continue to do some of that stuff, but you know it just doesn't feel right. And so a circumcision of the heart is where we allow God to mold us and to make us into the person that he wants us to be. We're not bragging about keeping the law. We're not bragging about knowing all the, the, uh, the cold and uh, you know trying to convince people that we're better than them because of our heritage or anything of that nature. We are right with God but through his son Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins. And the only hope that we have is not through keeping the law because we know that all of us are lawbreakers. All of us are sinners who fall short of the glory of God. But our hope is not in keeping the law, but in our hope is in a relationship with Jesus who died on the cross and rose from the grave and ascended to heaven who's at now at the right hand of God the Father making intercession for you and I. God's uh, goal for us is not in keeping law, uh, but in uh, maintaining a fellowship where he guides us and he, he leads us and he shows us uh, what areas of our lives we need to be better at. He cuts us, cuts on our heart and takes this out and this out to make us better people. Uh, they cut their flesh and we surrender our flesh. They cut it, we surrender it. Because even through the cutting of flesh, they were not perfected. But through the surrendering of our flesh to the Lord Jesus Christ, we daily can become more like Jesus. Now, we'll never be perfect here on the planet. We'll never be all that God wants us to be as long as we're here. But we are to be daily growing uh, on, a, on a daily basis, growing to become the people that God's called us to be. My goodness, how can we not look at at this book and think of the sacrifice that Jesus made and, and, and not be changed. 
How can we not think about the goodness that God saved us from a hell and and God loved us enough to send His Son Jesus Christ? And how can we not be changed? And yet there's some, and yet there's some who give God no no uh, no thought. There's some who will go to church year after year after year and will be the same way years later. And it's not because they haven't heard the word. It's because they've done nothing with it. They were satisfied with missing hell, going to heaven, and nothing in between. They were satisfied with being called a Christian, but not ever becoming what God wanted us to be here on this planet. And folks, listen, if we're not careful, we can become like the Jews. We can, uh, of Paul's day, we can, we can brag around and tell people how to do this and how to do that when we're doing the same things ourselves. If we're not careful, we become of the Jews of the day, of Paul's day, and, and we think we're better than everybody else because we pack a, a King James Bible and uh, we go to a church where they hoop and holler, whatever it is. If we're not careful, we can think that we're better than other people because uh, we, we haven't missed church in 25 years. Folks, the only thing that separates us from other people, the only thing that separates us from those that are not saved is the blood of Jesus Christ. The Jews thought they had it all right because they were doing certain things. They were cutting the flesh, and they, had, they were born into a Jewish ancestry. It's almost like the old preacher who says, don't do us as I does, do us as I say. And that's what Paul was trying to point out to him. Your religion is worthless to you because you're circumcising flesh and not keeping the law. God's doing a new thing, and he doesn't want circumcision of the flesh. He wants circumcision of the heart brought in by the Holy Spirit. And so the question has to be asked of all of us is that are we allowing God to cut away at our heart? Are we allowing God to mold us to be the people that he called us to be? Or are we like the Jews of Paul's day that are pointing people to church, pointing people to Bible, but we're doing the same thing as the rest of the world is doing? Now don't misunderstand me. We're never going to be perfect. But that's not an excuse for not trying. It's not an excuse for not putting God's law to work in our life. It's not an excuse for not trying to be the person God created us to be. And that's a daily struggle. It's a daily battle. And you've got to work on it. Because just when you think you've got it all together, it creeps back in there. Lost my cool this week. And it happened before I realized it. We've been having some trouble with the internet here, and and so um, internet's been on, it's been out, it's been on, it's been out, and um, so we thought it was the um, the router being out in the garage where it was hot. So I moved it inside, and I had to cut the top of the head off to get it to fit where I wanted it to fit, and I thought I could fix it myself. And um, what I did didn't work, so I had to call it the uh, the internet company and um, when the guy answered the phone I guess I thought he was talking too loud at me and uh, I come I just started on him you ain't got to holler at me give me somebody that won't be hollering well I got through it all and I got to thinking you know man you blew that I knew he wasn't hollering at you. You was just mad because you couldn't fix it yourself. And so you were taking it out on somebody who just happened to pick up the phone. We all fall short. We all mess up, even the preacher. And so I had to repent of that and, you know, felt guilty about it for several days that, you know, here I blew up on some innocent person that didn't, you know, really didn't deserve it. And it wasn't his fault, um, but that's what happens. 
And God needed to cut that away from me. God, I don't want to blow up at people. That's not who I am. Now, 20 years ago or 25 years ago, who cared, you know? But that's not who I am today. It's not who I want to be. Cut that out of me so that I'm not like the Jews of Paul's day who are telling everybody, get rid of anger, but it's okay if I have it. The Bible says be angry but sin not. And you know, guess what? I was angry and I sinned. I needed to repent. So let me ask you the question. Let's just think about this for just a minute. Are we doing like the Jews of Paul's day? We're telling everybody there's the way to go. But we're, we're, not, we're doing the same thing they're doing. We're judging other people uh, because they're not doing what we think they are to do. But in the darkness of the night, in the corner, the back of a booth somewhere, we're doing the exact same thing. Let God, let God this week work on our hearts. Shape our hearts to be the people that God has called us to be. That we might be a light and salt to this world. Okay, uh, next week we're going to pick up, or next time we do this, I won't say next week. I, listen, folks, I want to apologize. Uh, we'll do chapter 3 of Romans. We'll start on that when we get together. I want to apologize for not being regular with this. I've been having quite a bit of problems. Um, I've shared some of it with you, but uh, I've have been having real bad headaches. I've got, I found out that I've got from the base of my skull to my tailbone every disc in my body is diseased and I've got a whole bunch of them that are blowing out and uh, uh, to f I'm gonna, at some point I'm going to have to have a lot of surgery we're trying to avoid that right now uh, but I have been having headaches from C6, C7 uh, and so I had some injections uh, Friday to try to relieve some of that tension and um, that has helped. I feel a little better today. Still got a tad bit of a headache, uh, but I haven't been doing regularly because I just haven't felt well. Uh, the negative with the uh, steroids is that it's messing with my eyes, and uh, now I've got um, cataracts on my eyes that are going to have to be taken out um, at the end of the year. But God willing, I'm going to hang with this as long as I can. I hope to be with you guys um, as long as I can. Uh, I don't know how long that's going to be, but we're just trying to hang in there. But So if I'm not on here at a, at, uh, on Wednesday or Sunday night, then just know I'm probably having a bad a bad day or whatever. And uh, we would appreciate your prayers in, the, in this matter. Uh, if you don't have a church home, we'd like to invite you to Beaver. Now, right now, we're meeting out on the lawn, and uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do as we get through the summer uh, as far as moving back inside. I'm ready to go. To be real honest with you, but here's I miss the fellowship. Uh, I miss not being able to shake your hand or hug your neck. You know, I, I miss that, and um, I'll be glad when all this stuff is over. Um, and I hope you'll hang with us. You know, I hate to lose anybody, uh, but I understand. But we're doing the best we can. I'm trying, trying to meet the need, uh, even in an adverse situation. I'd, I'd rather be back inside and being as normal, but it's not. So hang with us if you can, uh, or you can join us here on Sunday morning on Facebook Live, uh, and uh, we'll we'll start back uploading these on YouTube as well. For those of y'all that may know that want to watch them, that doesn't have Facebook, but they've got a smartphone, they can put YouTube on, okay? All right, Romans chapter 3 next week. Uh, we'll hope that you'll tune in for us. Lenny, you have been here from beginning to end. Thank you. I miss you, and uh, I appreciate you hanging in there with me the whole time. Uh, hopefully we will see you soon and I want you to watch over my daughter when she starts school up there in a few weeks and make her behave all right everybody have a great day we love you God bless you